Erev Tov Chabrim, I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching uh, Israeli News Live, the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. And uh, I wanted to discuss with you uh, the identity of the Messiah and uh, in ways that maybe we've even overlooked ourselves as believers. Uh, it's very interesting to me, uh, especially when we were doing the broadcast the other day, going over into the olive tree where... Paul speaks about there in Romans chapter 11. So I've put together some different scriptures on this subject here. I'm really excited to talk to you guys about this. Uh, and I want to start right here in Isaiah chapter 53, a messianic prophecy uh, that, well, most rabbinical thinkers today would probably say it's not, but it doesn't matter what they say. The fact of the matter is it describes what happened to Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth, to a T. But we want to focus on some key verbiage here. So let's get started. Isaiah 53 verse 1, Who would have believed our report? And to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shot up right forth as a sapling, as a root out of a dry ground. He had no form nor comeliness that we should look upon him, nor beauty that we should delight in him. He was despised and forsaken of men, a man of pains and acquainted with disease, and was as one from whom men hide their face. He was despised and we esteemed him not. <clears throat> Surely our diseases he did bear, and our pains he carried, whereas we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded because of our transgressions. He was crushed because of our iniquities. The chastisement of our welfare was upon him, and with his stripes we were healed. All we like sheep did go astray. We turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath made to light on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, excuse me, yeah, oppressed, though he humbled himself and opened not his mouth as a lamb that is led to the slaughter and as a sheep that before his shears is dumb, yet he opened not his mouth. How in heaven's name could any Jewish believer Read the New Testament, especially when we get to the scriptures about his passion, the, his death, his burial, his resurrection, and then read Isaiah 51 and not realize that Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, uh, the Nazarite, was indeed fulfillment of Isaiah 53. It's beyond me. It's beyond me. Right? <clears throat> And, uh, you know, I think one of the most powerful displays of winning the Jewish remnant <clears throat> to Christ in Israel has been through Ariel Hyde, uh, the young man at an early age that took Isaiah 53 to his people and recorded those testimonies of waking up Israel while he was there. In fact, if you're looking for a remnant, the Sharit of Israel, you don't need to look any further than to see those Jews that are believing in Jesus Christ as the Messiah in Israel today, there is your remnant. You don't have to look any further. That is the remnant of Israel. Will there be more? Maybe so. Because two witnesses are still yet to come. But as far as a remnant, that is the remnant. The remnant is not the Sephardic uh, Jews in, uh, over in South America who already believe that Yeshua is the Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth. I have to say Jesus of Nazareth, friends, and listen, I know a lot of people, they get offended by that. Oh, you can't say Jesus. Jesus is uh, this Greek word of some Zeus God or something like that. Let me tell you something. There are some very crafty people out there right now that are perverting Yeshua and going to take you to something that is not the true Messiah. So I clarify it from time to time by saying Jesus of Nazareth. Okay? Yeshua. Yeshua Nazareth Mashiach. Maybe we say it like that. Jesus the Nazarite of uh, the Messiah. All right. So the point being, though, 
we have this beautiful scripture in Isaiah and uh, and we see that Yeshua he is the root he is the tree he is a sapling he's referred to as the root out of a dry ground he is the root and offspring of, uh, Je of, of David. Jesse, uh, I believe, it re refers to that here in the uh, Isaiah, the, the 11th chapter, I believe it is. Let me just go up so we know for sure what chapter we're in. Yeah, Isaiah chapter 11. We get down to verse 9. <clears throat> uh, start at verse 8. And the sucking child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the winged child shall put his hand on the basilisk's nest. Or den, they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And it shall come to pass in that day that the root of Jesse, that standeth for an ensign of the peoples, and to him shall the nation seek, and his resting place shall be glorious. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord will set his hand again the second time to recover the what? The remnant of his people that shall remain from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. And he will set up an ensign for the nations that will assemble the dispersed of Israel, gathered together the scattered of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Do you not know that when Yeshua was here, he said to his apostles, go only into the lost sheep of the house of Israel? Did anybody forget about that? Did they forget that the apostles, even the 70, when they were sent out, they were sent out to be a witness to the house of Israel about Yeshua? He mentions Assyria. Why do you think Paul had so many believers in Damascus when he was on his way there to destroy them? There was a huge group of believers in Syria because why? When Yeshua was up there by Capernaum, it said those from Syria came because, you know, in the biblical days, they knew that that part of land belonged to Syria. I know there's a lot of people who don't like that very well, but it is true. It's written in Isaiah. Beyond the river of Jordan, it was Syria. You know, yeah, that's right. But anyway, he came there to them and he healed all of their sick and they believed on him. These were remnants of the house of Israel. So that remnant was already witnessed to long before these rabbis that are claiming to go down to South America and doing their little deed down there today. They're, they're like, what do we say? We call it a day late and a dollar short. Right? I'm not going to mention names here on this particular broadcast here, but I'm just kind of throwing that out there for you so you know what we're talking about. And so here Yeshua is called the root of Jesse. All right. Now, he, see, here's the whole thing. He is the root and the, and, and the uh, you know, he is the vine, as he says in the New Testament. But, you know, the thing is, is he is the olive tree. He is the tree of life. He is not a separate tree. Which is interesting, in this picture here, they show a serpent on the Sephirot tree. Which I kind of find that ironic, especially since there are the extreme Kabbalists and Talmudists that believe in the holy serpent as they use in the Gemetria value of Nachash, serpent, and Mashiach having the same equivalent value of 358. So they speak about the holy serpent. Hmm. No. It's, you know, gematria, you might as well get you a set of dice and roll the dice then. You might as well go ahead and gamble because it's no different. It's not of God. Kabbalah is not of God. I'm going to say it to you right here. You're dealing with divination. You're dealing with idolatry. You are dealing with what God told you to stay away from. All right? Just because every Hebrew letter has a numeric value doesn't mean that you take the name and add up a value and put them all together. 
you know, you can really get into some messed up ideology when you do that. All right? So no, Yeshua is the tree of life. And the tree of life is not a separate tree. Plain and simple, it's not. It's Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua HaMashiach. That is the tree of life. But they want to come up with this nonsense over here to give you some kind of Kabbalistic, uh, Talmudic ideology of a separate tree, which will take you right to the... To the now I will tell you this, though. The root of the separate tree is the serpent. There's no doubt about it. I agree. I'll agree with that. The root of that tree is the serpent. So we'll leave it right there at that. Let's move on, though. So we want to go back to the book of Romans. And this is chapter 11. And this is what really got me inspired when I was speaking with you guys the other day. Uh, I'm, I'm sitting here reading this scripture here, and I'm just, we're, we're going way down in uh, Romans 11 here. And Paul is using the analogy of the olive tree. And he says, I'll start with verse 14. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are, of my, which are my flesh, speaking about Israel, uh, the house of Judah, and might save some of them, of course he was a Benjamite, for if the casting away of them be the reconciliation of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? Now that receiving of them is the remnant of what? of Judah, not of the house of Israel. I mean, somebody missed something somewhere along the way because the only remnant that is to come back and recognize Christ as the Messiah is the house of Judah. The house of Israel has already had her day. Watch what he says. Verse 16, For if the fruit, first fruit, first fruit that is, be holy. The lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. Who's the root though? This is the part that a lot of people miss. Who's the root? Yeshua HaMashiach Shel Nazareth. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is the root. All right? For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. That's the first fruit. Who's the first fruit? First fruit were those of the 12 tribes of Israel that were believing originally in the beginning that were staying with the word of God. Now, let's go on though. If some of the branches be broken off, okay, and thou being a wild olive tree were grafted in among them and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree boast not against the branches but if thou boast thou bearest not the root but the root thee all right thou will say then the branches are broken off that I might be grafted in well because of unbelief they were broken off and thou standest by faith be not high minded but fear for if God spared not the natural branches take heed lest he also spare not you alright now that's something important to remember right there if God spared not the natural branches Take heed lest he also spare not thee. Maybe we should hold that thought for one second. I got to show you something here. It's really important. We'll come right back to Romans. I think it's here in John. Yep. In John chapter 15 verse 1. I am the true vine. Okay. And my father is the husbandman. Every branch of me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that... that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. In other words, just clip it off. They don't take the whole branch off, just clip it off so it sprouts out more branches and it bears fruit. But who's the husbandman? His father. Alright? That's important to know because watch what we have in Romans here. Alright? For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee. You don't think Paul didn't know what he was talking about right there? 
He knew that God was the one that did the pruning, just as John quoted Jesus as saying, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. What are you talking about then? So then over here, God spared not the natural branches. So Israel, though they did not know it, they were grafted into Christ. Whoa! Now, now, now we got that part. Let's take a look at something here then. Let's go back then to John chapter 1. Maybe it might make a little bit more sense to you now. Makes a heck of a lot more sense to me. John 1 and 1. We just go right there to the beginning. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word, what? Was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. All right. So even though Christ was not in a physical form of flesh on the earth as Redeemer, He was with God. He was God. All right. And all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. What was in him? In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Okay, if, if in him was life, then let's take a look back over here at Genesis, and let's go to Barashit then. We'll go right in there then. Let's take a look at it then. Let's go to chapter 2, right? Let's get down, I think, about verse 6. Uh, here we go, verse 7. Or no, let, 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 me, let, me go back to, let me go back to the uh, chapter 1. I apologize. Chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Alright? And God said, let there be light, and there was light. But as we read already, now the earth was unformed, void, darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. Now, interesting enough, and I've brought this out to you guys before, let me just highlight it for you real quick in Hebrew right here. The word darkness, ve choshech. Now the, the vav right here means and, so we have choshech. Put a noon right here, you have nachash. That's an interesting thought. And he is the darkness. His root, the serpent's root, is in darkness. But Christ, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. The only division that came in there was to separate good from evil. All right, now, so we go back to John 1 and 1. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. All right, now, if we go back to Genesis, we get into chapter 2, we get to verse 7, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, chayim, and man became what? A living soul. All right, that life caused him to be a not just a life, but light of men. And literally, they were uh, Adam and Eve were called Ish and Isha, which is the fire of God. So there you have it, right there. Now, so we look at that, and then we back up, right? Sorry about that. And then I'm going to go back to this Sephirot tree, which is junk. We back up though where we were at here. We were back over in John chapter 15. See? My father is a husband. Every branch that beareth not fruit taketh away, right? 
Now let's go down to verse 4. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me, my words abide in you. You shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Here is, herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. As the, as the Father loved me, so I have I loved you. Continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. The things I have spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. All right? So greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. All right. Now, the whole point, though, is to look at this, is to see, again, that he is that vine. Just as Paul says over here in Romans, you know, that the branches were in, but who were the branches really in? They were in Christ. Because going all the way back to the beginning, as John show, so clearly brought out, that he was the light, and that the light, let's see, all right, in him was life, right? And the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. All right, it goes on down, talks about John. But the point is, Christ was the tree of life. See, it, when he shows right there, in him was life. That lets you know that he was that tree of life. In fact, if you look in Genesis, after he, he breathes in him, right there, Ipak bepa'av nishmat chayim. The last word right here, chayim. He breathes into, the, into him this body called Adam, that life. The word chayim is life in a plural form. Adam becomes a lenefesh chaya, a living soul, but it's from the tree of life, right? I think that's in, uh, yeah, right here, verse 9, right here. Let me find, here we go. Ve'etz ha'chayim. Again, the chayim. So when he breathes in his nostrils, he's breathing the fruit from the tree of life into him. And then what happens? He becomes a branch. He is now connected with his creator, which is Christ Jesus and Adam and Eve are part of the branches to the tree of life. Because that life was breathed into them. The root gave them life. All right? And this is what I'm seeing when I'm looking over here at Romans. I hope you guys are getting this. This is what Paul saw. You know, that's what it was really got me. And then, of course, I saw John saw the same thing. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch of me beareth fruit. Beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now are you clean, right? So he goes on down. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them, you know, they, they're going to burn them. Uh, wow. So we read on in Romans, though. Behold the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness. And if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou shalt be cut off. They And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. All right? So there was, there, there was unbelief. Now you got to understand, too, there is tares, as Jesus speaks about in the one parable, the enemy sowed tares in among them. That's that reptilian race that is grafted in, or not grafted in, but uh, has been planted in amongst the wheat. And when the enemy did that, that's what they did when they were up in Babylon, and the priests, the Levites, and the priests, they were chief along with the rulers 
in mingling the holy seed with the Hittite, Perizzite, Jebusites. And we already know the Hittite, Perizzites, and Jebusites, and Ammonites, all these groups here, were of the Nephilim. We know this, why? Because of the book of Numbers. All right? And some people don't get this, so we'll do it in Hebrew. All right? So if you look at the book of Numbers, we go to chapter 13, and we go to the very last verse in chapter 13, verse 33. All right? That and there we saw, okay, Besham, Besham Ra'ani, uh, Ra'enu. See, Ra'enu, that means there, and there we saw it, Hanephilim. All right, not giants, Nephilim. Bene Anach, the sons of Anach, not Enoch. Okay, don't get it confused. You know, no matter how many times I say this. People don't listen. All they do is hear, oh, I didn't know Enoch was a Nephilim. I didn't say Enoch was a Nephilim. Enoch, A-N-A-K. Okay? Aleph, uh, Ein Nun uh, Kof. All right, but Enoch is what? From mean Hanafalim. They did not put the vowel points right in here. It's one thing I didn't like about these rabbis putting the vowel points. All they wanted to do is to create their own doctrinal idea. Nafalim. There's an extra yod here. Moses knew what he was doing. He'll overhear that yod is not there. It's not between the fe and the lamed. So he is from the Nafalim, all right, which is the fallen angels. He is direct descendant. And who are they? Who is he from? Who's Enoch from? Hittite, Jebusite, Canaanite, Perizzites, etc. He is from those groups over there that mixed in there. There's ones that Joshua was commanded to destroy. And they were told not to mingle in amongst their children or to have children by them. But what did the priests do? What did these good old Pharisee boys do when they got over into Babylon? Had kids by them. Gave them some of their daughters. Took some of their sons. Yeah. Ended up with a corrupt, perverted race. No wonder why Yeshua said that they were a bunch of serpents and vipers and generation of serpents. Goes to figure. So yeah, John said that every tree that does not bring forth good fruit, the axe is put to the root of the tree. You know why the axe is put to the root of that tree? Because that tree has nothing to do with Christ. There's a difference. I will say this, and I'll clarify that for you. There is a difference between that of the unbelief that they were taken out of the, uh, uh, the olive tree, which is Christ, representation of the tree of life, and that they could be regrafted in again. Then that of this reptilians here, where John says he puts the, the axe to the root of the tree on every tree that doesn't bring forth good fruit. I think it's a very powerful statement. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. For if thou were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted in contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? In other words, grafted into Christ. You know, the whole beauty of this here, and I hope you really guys are seeing this, Yeshua is that tree, and I think y'all know that, but I think what a lot of people are missing is that Israel was grafted into Christ before he ever even came to this earth. He was showing this. This is what Paul is showing you. He was that tree all the way back to the Garden of Eden. But through sin, they cut their way off to that tree. And the thing was, was when Christ came, it was, he was still the tree. He was the root of, of Jesse, the root of David. And they were in him partaking of the goodness of Christ the whole time. But when Christ come on the scene, this is when God determined which ones were truly grafted in him, which ones were putting forth good fruit and which ones weren't. 
For I would not, brethren, you should be ignorant of this mystery, that lest you should be wise in your own conceit, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Sion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. All right, now, now that I shared with you that, now take a look at Malachi. Now, in the King James Version, it's Malachi chapter 4, verse 1. In the Hebrew Bible, it's chapter 3, verse 19, because there is no chapter 4, 4 in Hebrew Bible. Still the same scripture, though. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Interesting. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. All right, now let me look at this over here in Hebrew with you. This is so fascinating. So the day is coming that's going to burn as a furnace. And all the wicked, all the proud, all that, do, all that work wickedness shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall set them ablaze, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. He's not talking about Christ. Now we're getting into Satan's tree. Maybe that does have something to do with their little Sephiroth tree. The serpent's tree. That's what they're trying to put you in now. They're trying to say that the Messiah is the holy serpent. No, he's not. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in its wings. His wings, actually. And you shall go forth and gamble as calves of the stall. And you shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I do make, saith the Lord of hosts. Now, now maybe it makes more sense why. All right, I'll, I'll put you back over in King James Version here. Let me go to Matthew. Now it makes more sense why John says here in Matthew chapter 3, I'll start at verse 9. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. That's interesting right there. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children to Abraham. That's what they tried to tell Yeshua too. Yeshua says, if you were Abraham's seed, you'd do the works of Abraham. Now, Jesus does say that they are Abraham's seed, but this is the reason why I believe that the Jews today, Talmudic Jews, not true Jews, this is why the Talmudic Jews changed the law and said that you're Jewish by your mother, not your father. Now, it doesn't matter if it's your mother or your father, either one, but the reason why they did it was because they knew they knew that seed line had been corrupted in Babylon. When their daughters, when the priest's daughters, they had given them over to the Canaanite and the Hittite, the Perizzites, and they allowed a corrupt race to be born in among them. And then, of course, their, their children married in and mixed in and everything. By the time they got back to Israel, they had a, the priesthood, had the Levitical priesthood been corrupted by a bunch of ungodly Nephilim bloodlines. And vice versa. Their sons were taking their daughters and they were giving birth to children. And, you know, it just became a whole big mess. And what do we have? What did John say? That's why John says, don't say, say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. Right? He says, now also the axe is laid under the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bring forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. That's what Malachi is talking about. Right there. When the day comes, it shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. It's not talking about a nuclear bomb blowing you up and you ain't got no arms and legs. 
Now, John was saying that it needed to be done. The axe had to be laid to the tree, to the root of the tree, and it be cast into the fire. We know that happens at the harvest. Remember, he's going to separate. Because what happened? In the parable that Yeshua gave, he talked about that while they slept, showing that it would be a future generation, the enemy came along and he sowed tares or weeds into that garden. And when they came up, the weed and the tares were growing together. And they said, Lord, should we go out and take out these tares? Like John, should we lay the axe to the root of the tree and tear it all up? Jesus said, no, leave it alone. Let it grow to the harvest. Lest in the process you uproot some of the wheat too. He said, but at the time of the harvest, the reapers will go out and they will gather together in bundles those tares. And they will be thrown in what? Into the fire. They're going to root them up. No wonder why we read. <laughs> Let me add this one in here for you as well. No wonder why we read over in Isaiah. See? It's beautiful. Isaiah 61. Yeshua reads this, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good tidings unto the humble. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. The opening of the eyes of them that are bound to proclaim the year of the Lord's good pleasure. And then he closed the scroll, give it back to the priest. He said, this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. But then it goes on. In the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them garland for ashes, the, joy of, the oil of joy for mourning, the mantle uh, of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the terebinths of righteousness, the planting of the Lord wherewith he might glory. And they shall build the old ways, they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall renew the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. What did Jesus say? Your house is left to you desolate until you say, What blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord? So even though there is a judgment being brought see even though there is a day of vengeance of our God because who's the one Jesus said my my father is the husbandman he's the one that takes out all the evil right even though that's going on there's still a planting or a re-engrafting of the branches back to the tree Right? Which is in Christ. And they shall build the old waste. They shall raise up the former desolations. Now they'll get filled with the Holy Spirit. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. And aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. Think about it. And how did God do it when he sent Moses? God said, I'm coming down. I'm going to send you, Moses. Then he sent Moses and Aaron. But God said, personal pronoun, I will come down. Why? Because he's what? He's the husbandman. Plowman in Hebrew and the word husbandman is the same thing. Same word. Think about these things, friend. It, it is absolutely amazing to me. All right, let's move on. You're going to get ready to close here in just a second. In the book of Revelation as well. We read in chapter 5, and one of the elders, verse 5, saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Again, if he was the root of David, that shows he was that tree of life long before David came along. This is why Mark when Yeshua asked the question and Jesus answered and said, while he taught in the temple, how say the scribes that Christ is the son of David? Mashiach is the son of David. For David himself said by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Lord said to my Lord, sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. David therefore himself calleth him Lord, and hence is he then his son. And the common people heard him gladly. Now he quoted that right out of the book of Psalms. 
And David the Lord saith unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. The rod of thy strength the Lord will send out of Zion, rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people offer themselves willingly in the day of thy way, wet warfare. All right. Oh my gosh, it, it's amazing to me to see these things that Yeshua says here. He is that olive tree. He is the tree of life. He is everything. But he's not a sephirot tree. I trust that the true remnant, because that's, that's the remnant, by the way. Like I said, there is this group. Uh, and maybe they mean well. I, I don't want to bash them too hard, but the thing is they're trying to make the Sephardim, the Jews that went through the Inquisition, they're trying to put them back under Talmudic reign, underneath the Talmudic rabbis. This is supposed to be Christians. This is supposed to be people that already believe that Yeshua is the Messiah, and they want to put them under a bunch of Talmudists? Listen, we're to be taking the gospel of Jesus Christ to the Jews. We're to be waking up our brethren to recognize that Yeshua is the tree of life and that if you would only receive that life that was in Him, you could ask what you will and God would grant it to you. And instead, they're trying to bring every kind of damnable doctrine of devils into the tree of life. It won't work. The remnant of today is not the remnant of the house of Israel. It's the remnant of the house of Judah that's got to be regrafted back in. That's what Paul was talking about. You see, 2,000 years ago, now there was a, a, a reptilian group mixed in there through the Levites, through the priesthood, but there were Jews that would have believed had it not been for that Talmudic group that came back from Babylon, that held the people crushed and held captive. That's why Yeshua said, how often I would have hovered you as a hen with her own brood, but you would not. Why? Because the Talmudic rabbis of Jesus' day kept the people in prisons. They were bound to their Talmudic traditions and could not see the gospel so they were blind. See, the blind had led the blind. They both fell in the ditch. And Yeshua said, Your house will be left to you desolate until you say, Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. And until the Jewish people of today, until there is a remnant that says that today, there will be a desolation. But there is a remnant already waking up in Israel today. And as it was 2,000 years ago, the civil authority of the state of Israel with the persecution of the Talmudic Jews are persecuting that very remnant today. No different. And they still hold the people in bondage. We got to break that bondage by the power of the Holy Spirit. You got to pray for them and shake them that somehow or another God will pull them out of that mess, out of that nonsense that they're in. And right now they're trying to drag the Sephardim, the Jews that are in South America, they're trying to drag them underneath the Talmudic reign. The more they can get away from Christ, that's the devil's plan to put you under that tree of knowledge. Don't you know the rabbis are teaching that the serpent liberated Adam and Eve? Oh, jeez. They'll do anything they can to keep you from seeing that Christ, that Yeshua truly is the Messiah. Oh, they'll say, he was a Jew. We got him right over here. He's obeying Rabbi so-and-so, and he's keeping the Talmud. And Oh, Yeshua was a Talmudist. No, he was not. He condemned the Talmud, and so did Paul. I'll show, I'm going to do a message just on the places where they were condemning the Talmudic teachings of their day. Then maybe you'll wake up from all this nonsense. They're bewitching you. Even Paul says you've been bewitched. Oh, God.
Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord, that you'll wake up my people, Lord. Do something for them, Father. I pray, Father God, because Satan is truly, as the scripture says, he's a, a ravenous lion seeking, seeking who he may devour. But Father God, know that you've got a remnant. And you said that out of Zion will come the deliverer. Zion, you wrote it in your word, Father. Dear God, there is a remnant. And right now we must find that remnant of Judah. And she must find Christ. She must recognize that Yeshua truly is the, the root and the offspring of David, that, that he is the vine and that they are the branches, and that if they would only graft into him, if they would only take that waters of life that he had to give when he died on Calvary, they would live again, Father. I pray sincerely, dear God, that you'll help this people, Father. I ask it in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Mashiach Nagid, of the prophecy of Daniel, chapter 9, Father God. Wake up our people, Lord, in this time of trouble, Lord. I ask it. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, friends. Thank you for watching. Uh, by the way, I know our, some of you have been, talking about, been in trouble with our website. We did find out our website has been hacked. That's officially was brought to us by WordPress. Uh, we were able to contact them today. Our website has been majorly hacked by intruders that don't want you to know the truth. Uh, we have taken steps to correct that. And uh, so if you do want to support the work, we thank you for that. You can, you can do so at our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org, or at our address here at the bottom. Thank you for watching. Pray for Israel. You know, when the scripture says pray for Israel, God's not talking about pray for them that they'll have this, the way they're going right now with, 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 with the rabbinical movement that's happening to try to bring Christians under, uh, under Talmudism. He wants us to pray for them that their eyes will be open to recognize Yeshua as the Messiah. When the law goes forth out of Jerusalem, that'll be your two witnesses that correct what the law is. So that you will know it's a law of love written on the table of your hearts. When, you, when, when we can see, and how you'll really know when Israel is beginning to recognize Yeshua, when they begin to love their neighbor as their self, when they quit supplying weapons to, the, to those nations, those terrorists, the jihadists in Syria, when they say to the Palestinians, you are our brothers, we, we are sorry for what we've done. Help us to, to make amends here. And we realize many of you are, are believers as well in Jesus Christ. Many of you are even Jewish. When we begin to see that type of actions in the Middle East, then you know they're getting on the right path. When you can get those Jewish ministers that claim to believe that Yeshua is the Messiah stop getting you to support wars to destroy all the nations in the Middle East. Iran doesn't want to attack Israel. All this is nothing but propaganda. They just need the evangelical support to support the destruction of these nations so they can bring about a new world order. Christ is no part of any new world order. He said, I go and prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. Does that sound like that we have a home here or some place where he went? I want to be in him. I want to be in him. That's where I want to be. God bless you. Thank you for listening today. And uh, 
Share this video everywhere you can, friends. We've got to get the truth out, especially for our Spanish-speaking brothers and sisters. Listen, I thought we would have somebody that could help us do this, and I know we've had some people reach out to us. If you have any way you can put the subtitles in our video, this video right here, for the Spanish-speaking people, if you got the ability to do it and then can send it to me, just send it to me. I'll, I'll upload it secondly. If you can download it into your, onto your page there and you can work with it in yours and then copy, you know, send that back to me. We'll copy what you did and then we'll post it as well. You post it on your page. We need Spanish subtitles to help the Spanish brothers and sisters to break from this grip. They haven't, they haven't been very successful as of yet. It's still a very small group that they're trying to lead the wrong direction. And then maybe too, maybe these brothers that are doing this, maybe these people that are leading these people straight to hell, maybe we can wake them up as well. If not all of them, maybe one or two of them will come out. We've got people that have already come out of that very movement that are ready to expose and tell you the truth about what's really going on. That's coming very soon here on Israeli News Live. Share this everywhere you possibly can. And the more languages we can translate this in, the better, you know, if nothing else, we wake up people to get them ready for Jesus Christ and His soon return. Our Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you.